Thank you very much, Capacity Crowd. A very happy Capacity Crowd. They're on the beers. Good evening. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Welcome to this week's edition of Life's Pitch TV. I'm Mark Murphy. And a big thank you to our sponsors who get us onto air every week. A massive thank you to our main sponsor, DPS Tech. Also to All About Hearing, marketing company Ginger Pickle, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, The Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Venue 16, Fred Olsen Logistics, John Keeble Cars, Bramford, the Dove in Ipswich, plus Ashford Wright Property and Building Solutions. And the sponsor of the sofa is DPS Tech, the world's biggest sponsor. Uh, let me introduce you to the team, make some noise. It's Terry Butcher. It's Russell Osmond. And from TWTD.co.uk, at great expense, it's Phil Ham. And on technicals, Richard and John. And you are our capacity crowd. Fabulous. Welcome to the show. Uh, it was great last week to have George back. So much feedback for George's enthusiasm last week. He's still got it, hasn't he? We can talk, can't he? He can, yes. You can talk, you can talk a glass eye to sleep, George, but no. <laughs> it was great, but he's been there and done it before. He knows what it's like. And all the agony of the, the playoffs and semi-finals in the playoffs, not getting to Wembley and, and to get to Wembley in like, you know, one out of one and then make, make sure town get to the... To the top, you know, it's it's something that we all want, and if if we have to go through that route, you know, so be it. But I thought he was he was he was great. He always is, and you know, he's he's quite humble as well when you when you think about it. Um, but he's also very knowledgeable, and he's you know he's part of that sort of era, isn't he? You know, by, yeah. bygone days where where your eyes, when George, you know, he always talked about his eyes. His eyes are pretty good because he's he brought on a lot of younger players, and he's got town to where they want to be. He spoke a lot about character as well, didn't he? The character in his side, how they managed to dig in when the going got a little bit tough. Um, big emphasis on that. You know, the, the character of the side got them through there. You know, but that is a reflection of the, the manager and his staff, Dale Roberts, of course, who was a great, great fellow as well. Well, we haven't got a, a special guest this week on the giant sofa, but what we do have is our capacity crowd, and several of them are going to come up and ask questions Wait. on our sofa. <laughs> How exciting is that? No, it's much more exciting than that. <laughs> Thank you. Something we've never done before. If it's a bad question, does it tilt backwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flipping through a secret Alec door. Graham Norton. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, but let's take a look at the season so far, sponsored by the Dove in Ipswich. And Birmingham City last weekend, that was a thoroughly professional performance, Phil, wasn't it? Yeah, we're talking during the game and saying probably one of the most comprehensive performances, I think. Um, the only thing that was missing for most of it was goals, wasn't it? The, the sort of early part of the, of the first half, we were very dominant, created opportunities, but didn't score. But then we did go ahead through Chappers as a uh, nice bit of invention. I think uh, a few of us were expect expecting an offside flag to go up, but I think that the linesman got it absolutely right when you see the, the video footage. Um, that puts ahead, and of course we conceded a goal. Um, kind of quite a little sharp break from them. Um, well taken goal, wasn't it, I think? Um, mm. But then second half, really, you didn't really see... Birmingham sort of doing too much, did you really? Didn't really see them um, taking charge of the game at any stage. Um, but we had to wait a bit. And again, we had this kind of, the game, there was a bit of a lull perhaps in the performance. And then we made the substitutions and that reinvigorated it once again. Jeremy Sarmiento scored with, uh, I think it was the 81st minute. And then uh, Amari Hutchinson, sort of the man of the moment, I think. Um, what a goal celebration. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> did you do that in your day, Butch? Yes, all the time. Yeah. 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 We, yeah, we yeah, did yeah. it together, didn't we? Yeah. Didn't you do a little twirl as, yeah. as well? Triple it? axle, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, would you not be worried as a manager just saying you're a player doing that? Because, wow, you know, just just, just your luck that he oh, was on some, his head. It's some height, some isn't height, it, when yeah. he does it? It's not, yeah. it's not just, you know, a quick he little hang. In, he should be in the Olympics, I think. He really. should really. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And it, I mean, he took that goal so well, I think. He had a long time to think about it. And he's, he's obviously, you know, right at the beginning of his career and just slotted it past the keeper very... Very confidently, really. And, uh, yeah, I think we needed that just to kind of calm down the last couple of minutes. Um, but really, yeah, a comprehensive 3-1 victory. Very Phil, nice. Phil, was his goal a little bit like you coming in from the right-hand side on your left foot? Yes, very slide? much so, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. That's, that's why he liked the goal so much. Yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah it did remind me of me. Mm. Did it? Good. 
<laughs> would you like to do the goal celebration then, if it reminds no, I'm you not going to manage that, I tell you, no. I know. Yeah, would, would you see many many kids trying to do that? Well, I think now they probably will, yeah. Well, I hope not. I'll show you now. But, oh, was... Do you not have any players that you in your teams that have done that and you've kind of have, had a word with them afterwards? I think someone got... I do remember a manager having a word with a player. I can't think who it was. Was it... Julius, Ag- Julius Agahauer or whatever when he was at Wigan. I think a manager had a word with him because his celebration was so... Uh, it, was, it was like that. Well, I mean, it all depends if he... You know, I mean, if he's good at it, then fine. You're OK. But <laughs> all these players sliding on their knees and all that. What does the groundsman say? Sliding on their knees towards the corner. Yeah. And all this sort of stuff. But... Pff, all we did was just shake hands and then walk back to the halfway line. That was, that was yeah. it. Yeah. Well played yeah. and good goal and carry on now. Let's get going. There are two that spring to mind for me. Uh, Chef Gikuchi, the flying yeah. fin. You know, the dive the up dive in the bomber. air. and Put down. a dent in the pitch, I should think. Yeah. 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 And who remembers Herman Horidison diving oh, into the uh, north yes. stand to celebrate a goal that actually I think wasn't his goal, was Mark it? Mark Birchall n- yeah. stole it off him, didn't he? The uh, lone, loney from Celtic sort of touched it over the line sorry mentioning Celtic okay. but um, uh, yeah and the, yeah, but that's yes, a classic uh, very great moment from that era wasn't it yeah, didn't you dive into the crowd one day Nottingham Forest well, I, I think lo- that was after I, I would have loved to do it because my hero would be Eric Cantona the way he dived into the crowd <laughs> <laughs> I would be trying to emulate him that was, that was brilliant that was I think yeah. you were going after a supporter that gave you a bit of abuse. I think you were... Yeah, well, there were quite a few, Russell. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, w- I did that as a manager, try, try to get the people, but I um, was held back a few times, but as, we, as you do, but it's, mm. it's emotion. As you do. Yep, which is why I sit over here. Um, <laughs> what did you make of the game, Russell? I enjoyed it. Um, we just needed the goal to get going. Um, I never thought we looked in any trouble, really. Um, and it was just a very solid run-of-the-mill performance. And again, we saw the benefit, as Phil said, of the the quality of the type of players that we have on the bench, that if we do need to find a goal, we've got players on the bench that can come on and do that. And they, they, they really do come on and um, make a mark in the time that they are on the pitch. They don't just come on and see the game through. They just come on and they really make an impression. So that's a really good sign. What do you think, Butch? Well, it was great to see the Kevin Beattie scoreline, 3-1. Yep. It was really good to see because there haven't been that His many. Daughter Emma pointed that out to me on yeah, Saturday night. I mean, yeah, I mean, I could do in three ones all the way through in the last 12 games. That would be great. But no, it was, it was, I thought it was, it was comfortable in the end. He never saw, as Russell says, we never saw them scoring in the second half. Just getting over the line. And I think um, with the goal difference now, the goal difference could play a big feature between us and Leeds. And Leeds are you know, quite a few ahead. Um, so you know, we need goals. And, and we're playing teams now that you sort of think, if things are right, um, if we can get a fit team or you know, these normal starting 11 and they're playing well, then we could, you know, we could overtake them. But it's going to be some, some feat to overtake them. But you know, it's something that you sort of feel might play a a, you know, a big part at the end of the season, but it was it was another good performance. Good to be back. Four wins on the spin. They've recovered from their wobble and they're scoring goals. And of course, so very tight feel now at the top there, isn't it? I know. And the, and the big news away from Portman Road was Southampton losing, wasn't it? Um, at Millwall, of all places, a team that looked you know as if they were kind of um, plummeting. But changed their manager. Uh, Neil Harris comes in, and he obviously what he you know that 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 kind of. Um, that that new manager bounce affected yeah. them, and then they won uh, they won a game that no one would have seen them winning. So obviously did us a bit of a favour. I think it's five points now, isn't it? We're ahead of Southampton, mm-hmm. level on points with Leeds. Um, goal difference obviously is that is there's there's a superior, but we're in this kind of run of games that we all feel that are winnable. Um, Plymouth on Saturday again, another one that I think fifteenth in the table. Another scene we you look at it and think, well, it's it's very winnable. Um, so yeah, we just got to keep ploughing on and um, see what happens in our games. And, and, and at some point, those teams will will slip up in, in, in other matches. Yeah, Southampton away at Birmingham the weekend and uh, Leeds away at Huddersfield. Yeah, a local derby. So, you don't know, yeah. things can happen in local derbies. Sure um, can. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, yes, I think that uh, as it stands, you look at Leeds and you think, well, their form is exceptional. I think you look at Leicester at the moment, their form is not quite so exceptional. No, no it's good. So they could drop away. Leeds could end up being the team that uh, that, that pull away from them. But um, 
yeah, there's, there's 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 plenty still to go. What twelve games? Twelve yeah. games is is still quite a quite is is a fair bit, isn't it? Yeah, well, Leeds are on a good run. They've got a, a pretty good run in as well. Um, they've won the last nine. But anybody here going to Plymouth? Yep. Yeah, me. Good, two, three. <laughs> yeah, good. You don't count, Phil. <laughs> no. All right, thanks. No, <laughs> it's, it's your job, Phil. But um, people going now, I think, what, you, you're going to leave straight after the show, are you? <laughs> Things like that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, no, no, no one ever seems to do the charity walk to go to Ipswich, to, to Plymouth for some, for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. I did caretaker at Plymouth for, I think it was about four or five games at the end of one season, and cough. We clocked up a few miles. I took over. Or I took Steve McCall was supposed to take over from Peter Shilton, who'd been sacked. Steve asked me to get out and help him. I said, "Fine, no problem." I was on gardening leave from Bristol City at the time. On the way down to Plymouth the next day, I get a phone call from the chairman saying Steve didn't want the job, so Steve has sort of resigned as well, and I was sort of left on my own and when I, I got there the manager's office one side of the desk it was about a three foot stack of shoot magazines <coughs> next to the manager's desk and on the other side of his desk was a, an even bigger pile of the the racing post <laughs> it was a bit of a gambler shield yeah, yeah. and yeah. first went out to the training ground big bag of balls about uh, 15 balls in the, in the bag there wasn't one round usable football in there they'd all got splits that they're all coming apart at the seam and everything so I had to get onto my turn and get a bag of balls sent down it was in a right state they've improved <laughs> Dan McC- hopefully not too much no oh, no, no I mean they're not having the season that they expected are they no no what's this could we beat them for the fifth time on the chart if we beat them Saturday is it Beat Plymouth? Plymouth, no. We've, we, um, they beat us last season and we drew 1-1 with them, but we beat them at Portman Road early in season yeah, 3-2. Right. But it's five in a row for us. Obviously we're on the last four, haven't we? Um, but it'll be five yeah. in a row. Uh, but that, but there's streak. going down to Home Park, it's, that's quite... is Home Park, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Going down there, that's quite a significant... Um, well, quite a difficult game. Yeah, many, bit, if they're on form, but... It's all, about, it's all about, for us, it's all about getting the... If, if we can score early... It settles the nerves, and then we, you know, we 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 look as over, then we can go on to win the game quite comfortably. But yeah. Yeah. we don't want to go a goal behind, like you know, especially at Plymouth, when you know we've done that pretty much a lot of the games this season. Kieran Guess was... who the manager was the last time I went down to Home Park? You, Paul Mariner. Yes. Paul Mariner. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. The late Paul Mariner. Have Great. another beer. That who's ever said Paul that. Paul Mariner's the last. The, Paul yeah, Mariner's the last. For Maris. Last Plymouth manager to win at Ipswich because he came down here, didn't he, with them when Roy Keane was manager and um, beat us 1-0, didn't he? Um, and I don't think Plymouth have won at Portman Road since then. Mm. So yeah. Interesting. There you but go. We're, but we're not playing at Portman Road. No, but we're not. In, in this instance, we're not playing at Portman Road. <laughs> so, um, but um, oh, I just thought I'd give you a little stat there. You go. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. He, um, there was a little stat as Kieran, well. Yeah. Kieran was saying in his press conference today that they're sort of the best team on the uh, trans- turning transitions into attack. Um, they've scored more goals than anyone else in that circumstance. So, as, as you say, that, that um, and, and if you remember the goal that they got down here after about seven minutes, Morgan Whitaker, yeah, um, stepped in from but, the right, and but it was exactly that, yeah. wasn't it? It was it was turning the, the uh, our attack into into their attack very very quickly, and then they've got him and um, Ryan Hardy was the other player that uh, that Kieran cited that uh, are very dangerous in that circumstance. So yeah, I think we've got to kind of avoid being caught in mm. that manner again. And a word about the fans' reaction. No, no surprise at all on the fifth minute. Um, mm. Clapping and shouting and cheering for Mogger, Tony yep. Mowbray. That was fantastic, wasn't it? It was a great, great reception for uh, a great servant of Ipswich Town. And Birmingham fans all joining in as well. It's lovely to see. Yeah, yeah, it was. One of the uh, centre-half school. Yeah, he's a, he's a proper bloke, Tony, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, he Mowbray. looks like a centre-half, doesn't he? <laughs> Ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Only a centre half could say that about another centre half. Yeah, 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 I mean, he, he would take that as a compliment, Moggers. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would anyway. Well, Gacy should have been a centre half. <laughs> he should have been, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and Mark Venus after the game, he, he said it was amazing the the ovation. He said, "I think everyone in the football world has been incredible towards him." I can't tell you on my side how many people have sent on their best wishes, made the effort to get in contact. So yeah, he's obviously very popular man throughout the game, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, he's very popular and he's had great success as well. And she never have been sacked at, at Sunderland. So no. I, bet, I bet they're feeling a little bit of regret about his uh, his departure at Sunderland. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, 
there's, you're getting more of these kind of baffling sackings, aren't they? Where they're kind of Birmingham was very similar, wasn't it? With well, I was always baffled when uh, their chairman sacked <laughs> me at my football clubs. <laughs> yeah, but I think there's That's similarity. Did you have a few yeah. then, Butch? Uh, yes, but moving on, yeah. <laughs> I think there's similarity with, with Birmingham earlier in the season, getting rid of John Eustace when they're about sixth in the table because they kind of went after a big name in that instance. And um, I think Sunderland were kind of looking at a, this kind of young, vibrant sort of manager, weren't they, in in in, uh, in, in, in Michael Beale. And obviously it was pretty disastrous, wasn't it, in that instance, and with Rooney at, at Birmingham. And uh, then, of course, Birmingham go back to the, the more tried and trusted of Tony Mowbray, who's, a, who's, who's, who's been there, done it. And really, you look through the list of clubs that he's had, he's not really been unsuccessful anyway. You probably know more about Celtic than and, and, and Hibs than, than I do, but he, he's had an ele- uh, a degree of success wherever he's been, hasn't he? He has, yeah. I mean, he's he's been taught by George as well. You know, you pick a lot up off the managers that you've played under. So um, he would have seen how George, and he was a coach here as well. So he knows, you know, he knows the game inside out. And there's not many tricks you can pull over Tony Mowbray he knows it very well and Mark Venus in particular with his as his assistant a tried and trusted assistant you know they're up, they they are a very very uh, formidable team so yeah. but I mean, wish him well because he's uh, he's he's a legend here yeah he's a good lad um so uh, thank you butch by the way for my gift this week i have got some uh, egg custard tarts and if you uh, probably means nothing to you um, but if you used to listen to the old radio show uh, you used to come in with a big bag full of goodies didn't you and every week I'd have a prawn sandwich and a custard tart yeah. so thank you very much it's just like old times yeah, that's no problem and um, it was I, I was I was keeping the clock on you when you used to eat your prawn sandwich and it was uh, pretty quick a minute 20 seconds yeah. I think. Was a, yeah, yeah, yeah. so and you, you tried your best to beat that every I always week. want to be in part of the prawn sandwich brigade but you know that yes you know that and you are yeah Yes, yeah, thank you. Fully you can do that, that instead of the keep you up challenge next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, how quickly can you eat yeah, two custard custards? Tart. Yeah, we could try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll Gotta see. Got to be under a minute. We have a very special keep you up challenge this week. It's like you've never seen before. Okay, so it's it's on the way. It don't don't tune out yet because it's on the way and it's going to be very special. I think I think you're going to enjoy this. It's going to be very different. Okay, sounds good. All yeah. right, yeah. Um, a shout out. Uh, which has come from Australia, and then we'll get some of our capacity crowd up onto the settee for us this week. This is from Joshua, Joshua Scott. Uh, me and my dad, uh, Steve Scott, regular listeners to your radio show, and we watch Life's a Pitch on a weekly basis. Uh, we're lifelong town fans, and he's been a season ticket holder since the 1980s. It's his birthday on Saturday, and I was wondering if there's any possibility at all that you and the gang could give him a quick shout-out on today's Life's a Pitch TV. would be an extra awesome thing. I'm studying away in Australia at the moment, and I won't see him until June. So that's from Josh. So, uh, so Steve, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Steve. birthday, Steve. Happy, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Steve. Enjoy your birthday and up the town. Uh, right, so we've got a unique opportunity with no extra special guests this week. The Capacity Crowd have the ability and the opportunity to come and sit on the sofa... Who sat on that? Connor Chaplin, Look. Cole Skews, Luke Chambers, David Sheepshanks, yeah. Pat, Pat Gobold, yeah. Kieran Dyer. Yeah. Who else have we had? Mark on Ashton. There? Mark Ashton. Yes. James um, who Croft. else? Uh, James Scowcroft. Scowy. Yeah. Scoe, yeah. Top Connor of the leaderboard. Yeah. Connor Chaplin. Dyer. I can't remember that. Kieran Dyer. Burley again. Yeah. yeah. George Burley twice. George Burley twice. Yeah. yeah. Chambo. Yep. Yeah, mention them, Richard. Keep up. Um, <laughs> so it's a unique opportunity to come and sit on the sofa, pick up the microphone. Not you, Richard. And talk to our legends. <laughs> uh, so who's going to go first? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, big round. We've had some international supporters in recently, haven't we? We've had the Danes in. Yep. Uh, we've got some Swedes coming very soon, about 20 of them, uh, which will be fun. Um, but we go to North America. And a big round of applause for Mick, who's come all the way from North America. Oh, Mick. Oh. Come, on, Mick. come on, Mick. Come on the sofa. Come on, Mick. Oh, he's got a bag. Come and More sit down there. Tarts. I love it when guests bring gifts. That's good, isn't it? Yes. Not for you. Oh, all right. <laughs> now, we've got quite a few retro shirts in tonight. We've got TXU Energy there. We've got a Power Gen 1 here. There's a couple of Marcus Evans ones, but we don't tend to talk about that. Um, and, and one or two new ones. So, a right mixture. But welcome. Which part of North America are you from? Uh, now in Florida. Yep. Previously, California. Okay. And is it easy to follow town over there? Ipswich TV, Town TV, yes, but now with all the Sky games, you have to have ESPN Plus, so you have to have two subscriptions. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. 
And are are there many town fans over in North America? I guess they're scattered all over the place. There's a they? lot. There, we have a main supports club. I I started the supports club with PZ at the playoff uh, final in uh, 2000. We met before the game. We started the club. We started after that. We have a website, itfc.nasc.com. Uh, I don't really take much of a role in it anymore, but P- PZ is still very active in it. And there's a lot of different ones sprouting up over the country now. I mean, we've got supporters clubs now all over the world. I think we're up to about 66, is it, Phil? Something there's like that. There's been a it? sudden kind of growth yeah. in the last year or so of, uh, yeah, you can see on the, uh, I think it's itfcsupporters.co.uk. I think there's where even one in are. Norfolk. <laughs> now that deserves a cheer come on you know oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's missionary no, work sorry, for heaven's sorry, sake isn't it they're, you know they're, they're very brave aren't they yes. yeah yeah and is it the isle of harris has got one i think yeah almost every day when you look on facebook there's a new one isn't there that, that comes up on the uh on, on the supporters clubs um yeah, it's facebook great, account do you yeah. ever get together we used to do annual trips to uh, Las Vegas. We'd all get together there. Um, I feel an outside broadcast coming on. Yeah, yeah not, not, not so much anymore. Yeah. But each state is now starting up their own little club. I'm reading online. There's one in Florida. There's one in Texas. And there's, there's one in Mexico that kind of links to us. But there's a lot more than you think. A lot of people back in the day, went to, their parents went to Mildon Hall or Lakenheath. So there's a lot of Americans that are Ipswich supporters, not just English people that moved out there. Well, you PZ know. is like that. PZ was at um, yeah, exactly. RAF Woodbridge, oh, USAF Woodbridge, wasn't yeah. it at the time? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, he, he's when, when I started doing those of the days as a, when it was a fanzine back in the day. Um, our subscription list used to have these kind of Latin names, and you know, um, Latin, and, and they're all obviously kind of because football in America or soccer in America was very much a sort of Spanish or Mexican sort of thing, wasn't it? Really, Don't call it at soccer. that time. It's but um, well, I was <laughs> in character, um, and. Um, yeah, and so yeah, so all these these people came over to, from uh, the states in the army and started watching town in your era and uh, continued their support many years afterwards. Yeah, and and now it's just getting bigger with yeah. the success. So. Oh, yeah, of course, well, you Arnold. boys went over there, didn't you? Didn't you? Uh, any any exploits you care to remember nope. from? Can't remember. Can't remember. United <laughs> states. No. No. Nope. Can't remember. Oh, yeah. I think we want to no. know, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> you can't let the fans down. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> we we had the. Um, pre-season Pan Am Sunshine Tournament one year. Yep. That well, was, we did uh, very well. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was pre-season. It was red hot. And we had easy access to beer. And we were bottom of the league by September, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we made the mistake of flying out first class with Pan Am and the Cobolds. Right. Not a good combination. Not a good combination, combination no. <laughs> then they ran out of champagne going over Ireland. <laughs> it was a long, I think we ended it was a long up, trip. I think it was Quantro we ended up on or something like that, wasn't it? Well, uh, wow. Yeah, it was, a, it was a few things, yeah. Very yeah. good. So so all the little miniatures as you're going over then, yeah? Yeah, well, they look like bottles, full bottles after you've had a few miniatures. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> no, it was really good. All oh. free as well. Brilliant. Happy days. Yeah, yeah happy we played days. Fort Lauderdale, uh, Strikers, Strikers uh, Tampa Bay Rowdies, and Sao Paulo came up from uh, from Brazil. And uh, I think we got robbed in the final, didn't we? Yeah, I think we lost one 0 didn't we, or something? Yeah, yeah. I think we got we sort of got not not good. Cheated out of that one a little not, bit. Not good. So um, were there any other sort of um, Brit players for those teams? Had that sort of started at that point? Uh, <sighs> no, I can't remember actually. The Brazilian <laughs> Oscar really played. Fuzzy for, moment in my life. Uh, <laughs> the Brazilian Oscar played at set half for Sao Paulo, didn't they? Yeah. I think he was the only good player they had. Rodney Marsh, I think, might have been playing for... Tampa. 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 Um, yeah, well, really we've, we've also, we also did a lot of um, end-of-season trips out there. We went to, to Calgary. Um, Florida was a big, was a big uh, um, venue for us. We went to Hawaii. That was, um, that was brilliant, Hawaii. Wow, it's fantastic. Long journey, but well worth it, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. What well, was it? The Toronto first... Hawaii for about 10 days. Yeah. And then came back and played Paul and Timbers Paul and, and Timbers. Vancouver Whitecaps. Yeah. End of season, the things you have to go through. The end yeah, of the it season. was tough, <laughs> isn't it? Oh. It, was a, it was tough. It was a three-week trip, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah and it I, ended, I ended up in, in, Van, in Vancouver. I ended up rooming with Pat Sharkey. Remember Pat I Sharkey? I do remember Pat Sharkey, yeah. The Northern Ireland midfield. Was a Northern yeah. Ireland midfield player? Yeah. And when he One of Beat's best friends, actually. They yeah. would, they would well, yeah, go off you, drinking together, yeah. Yeah, well, they're virtually the same sort of mentality, yeah. weren't they? But um, it was like this, the colour of that shirt was like 
Sharky's face during the game. It was unbelievable, crimson. It was, and I had to room with him. So um, it's the night before the game, and uh, I want to get to. I want to. There's a twin beds, and I want to get this. I want to get to sleep. And then the next thing I hear that he's having a he's having a shower. This is about ten thirty at night, so he's having a shower. So he, so I'm, oh, he, he, the shower's going and he's singing and, and, and bang, crash, wallop and all that sort of thing. And the next thing, he's, next thing, there's all water pouring out of the bathroom around the bed and everything else, around the clothes and everything else. It's strewn about everywhere. And he comes through naked, which is not a pretty sight. And that was as scary enough in it, as it was. And then he came for me and I've said, no, come on, we've got to get this, we've got to get this sorted out. We've got to ring people up and... I was ringing the, trying to ring reception and he was trying to get the phone off me and we ended up having a bit of a fight. So I thought, the hell with this. It's a game the next day. I went and picked up my dad's camera, my wallet, my passport, my clothes and went next door and went into your room. I came into your room and then I spent the night on the sofa in your Kept room. Kept me awake. Yeah. And then, uh, when then we eventually um, uh, you know, calmed things down, went to the game, played the game. And Sharky Shark, Shark, was playing and starting. But I don't think he touched the ball because he couldn't actually see it. He was running about, absolutely smashed out of his head. So, yeah, but apart from that, we had a great trip. Yeah, it was excellent. I, I, I know. Excellent. Someone told I, me a Pat Sharkey story. Um, he, he won one cap for Northern Ireland, didn't he? I think it was in against Scotland in Glasgow, um, Hamden probably. Anyway, I think Beat might have told me this. Anyway, so uh, he'd kind of arranged to meet Sharkey after the game in, in Ipswich. Met, and uh, he, he meets him in the first floor club, walks in and sees Pat Sharkey on the dance floor, still wearing his Northern Ireland shirt that he played in the game earlier in the day yeah, on the dance <laughs> He well, travelled all the way down from Scotland. He was probably covered in sweat because he just ran about and didn't really touch the ball, did he? That was a, <laughs> it was a great, great career. Yeah. <laughs> Mick, you've got, uh, you've got a bag. Yeah, uh, one more thing on that. If yeah, I go can, for it. Yes, yeah, talk to these boys. Yeah. Rodney Marsh. So... Um, I was in St. Petersburg, which is where I live, outside of Tampa. Yeah. And we had one night, there's a British pub there called the Horse and Jockey. And one night, Rodney Marsh was in there with Alan Hudson, Stan Bowles, and some other players. Yeah. You said I can't swear on the show tonight, so I can't tell you the stories that were told. But you should have. They <laughs> no, held court in the go entire on, yeah. bar. Go on. No, no, no. On, I'm not going to. The late Stan gonna. Bowles, I'm afraid. You, yeah. No, I know. R.I.P. Stan. But you, but tell you, us, yeah. you, you, you can tell us after. that. I'll tell you yeah, after. Yeah, but yeah. the stories that night that were going around, uh, they would go to the game. 15 minutes before the game started, they would finish their pint, put the cigarette down and go play. Yeah. It was crazy, the stories we heard that night. Good old anyway. days. Yeah, anyway, sorry. <laughs> well, I Sam, had to shut up because you said about Stan Bowles. <laughs> but they did play in green and yellow, the Rowdies, and they still do, so. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, green and yellow? I can't go watch them. No. Green and yellow? <laughs> cannot for, cannot go watch them. No, no, not for me. Terrible state of affairs. What's in the bag? I, I'd have a couple of things for you. I always like to bring something. Because Phil had a hat before, didn't Phil he? Phil had a hat, but this is too big for Phil. <laughs> So I have a uh, North American Sports Club hoodie that oh, I bought over for you. And um, whoever oh, nice. it appropriately fits, um, so I'll give it to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Made to measure. And yeah, this, me this is one of those typical hand-ons, but it's a, uh, a history from 1938 of Ipswich. It goes runs through the Roy Keane era. Yeah, so I, gotcha. I know you love that. Sort of, there's lots of pictures of you two in there. Oh, so I wish I... I'll give that to you to share. With in black and white, yeah? They are all in black and white, yes. <laughs> well, so that's thank you very much. That's not very quite kind of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mick, sir. thank very you ever so much. Yeah, really yeah, good well to see done, you. Thank you. So you're going to Plymouth. How long are you over here for? Uh, I leave on Monday. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, Ooh. Plymouth tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I'll be meeting Phil Essex, if you know Phil. Yes. The uh, superstar Ipswich supporter of all yes. time. He's missed one game in 20 years, yeah. I think, because of COVID. Yeah. But he was not very happy well, about it. No. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, he's got me a ticket and we're going to hang out in Plymouth on Saturday night. Fantastic. Oh, well, you're halfway home if you're going to Plymouth, aren't you? <laughs> no, I've got to go back. I was in the Navy, so it would be an old return to... Yeah, be to, careful to down Plymouth. there. Tread carefully. Oh, I know Union yeah. Street very, very well. <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> Mick, thank you very much. Give him a round of applause, everybody. Adam, Mick, thank you. Um, Mark's here. Mark's the presenter on Suffolk Sound. Uh, there's, it's a great radio Ooh. station. Check it out. <laughs> Suffolk Sound. You like it, Russell, don't you? I love it, yeah. Big fan of that. It's a great show on a Saturday morning, 7 till 9. Apparently. Who's yeah. that? That's me. Yeah. <laughs> Community hour's not that hot, though, Mark. Oh, <laughs> <it's not. laughs> he actually came on my show. I know. I did, yeah. Just I walk know. past. I you know. have to walk past again, I think. You're, you're not yeah. going to need another guest. <laughs> what, do you drag people off the street to come yeah, in? We yeah, we have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah come, right. come down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> people just walk down for an ice cream or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah. on the radio yeah. Yeah, why not yeah, yeah, yeah it's perfect isn't it we have a few people just drag you in yeah yeah <laughs> five hours late you can go <laughs> All right. what do you want to talk to the boys about um in the ki when you were at your height of your professional career six foot four yeah <laughs> <laughs> what 
premiership club now would be after your contract? And which one would you like to play for? Apart Good from Ipswich, of course. Good questions. Oh, I think oh, Sheffield well. United <laughs> would be after me you know, to try and uh, stop the goals going in at the back. Um, but I would like to have been able to play for well, Derby County on in the Premier League. Um, someone goes out the window. It wouldn't be Nottingham Forest because it's yeah, too close to Derby. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's a good question, that. What about style of football? I, remember I did a bit with Kieran Dyer a couple of years ago and he said, because he's played with you in charity games, and he thought that you are the type of central defender that any club in this era would want. He thought that Pep would be after you. Do you fancy yourself for... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to didn't sound too. Yeah, cocky, I, I know you were winking sure. at me yeah. to, to mention. Like John yeah. Stones and just walk into midfield and yeah, yeah, spray it about left foot, right foot. Mm. Yeah. Did you think this era would suit you? I think so. Yeah, I think I was a decent passer of the ball, um, quite comfortable in possession, and you know, I think quick enough to get about the pitch. So, yeah, uh, the only thing I would miss playing today is the fact that you can't kick anybody up in the air and get away with it, you know. <laughs> because I think there should be a certain amount of physical contact allowed in the game and it's not these days. And commentators are as bad as anybody. They say, well, contact was made in the penalty box, so it should be a penalty. Not all contact is a foul. So a certain amount of contact should be allowed in the game. But the players cheat these days and, you know, they con the referees and the referees aren't very good. So people get away with it. Yeah, I would. Um, uh, I would like to think when you were a, you were an excellent passer of the ball. You you know you say you, you did okay. You were Thank an you, you were head you of were, the ball. You, well, you don't do much heading now, so I'll be I'll be like an old dinosaur. But no, you 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 passed the ball really well, and you could step up into midfield like the John Stones does, and all that sort of thing as well. And you, and you like to think that you could adapt, but with me, it's. You know, I'd end up like probably Harry Maguire, just getting abused by the fans and all that sort of thing. But uh, I don't know. It's it's a it's a really good question. You know, he, and has a footballer now, even the lower league, say, getting approached by any Premier League club means money, means all the trappings that go with that. So um, it's a bit like. Um, who did we ask on here when I said, you know, what what club would you like to go to? And he said, anybody in Saudi. It was Luke Chambers. Anybody in Saudi Arabia? Well, that was his, that was his answer yeah. because of the money and all that sort of thing. That's a big governing factor now, rather than rather than style of play. It used to be, you know, playing for a team that suited you and you you think you could help them out, but it's all about the money now, unfortunately. You only played for Ipswich in England, didn't you? Well, well, no, you obviously, yeah, after after Rangers, you played for you managed clubs, didn't you? A player manager clubs. But well, I had a good run at Coventry as player manager for yeah. seven games in 18 months, so I did pretty well there. Yeah, you, <laughs> you nearly joined Tottenham at one stage, didn't you? Before you went no, to Rangers? No, I didn't nearly go. No. Well, they were interested in you. Weren't they, they were interested, but Manchester United were interested, but no. But you wouldn't play at the time. You wouldn't play for any club in England other than Ipswich. Is that right? No, I never said that. No. no, I remember yeah. being reading that somewhere. That was all. Well, you read in the wrong place, didn't right, you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't wasn't a Norwich paper, was it? Or anything? Oh, no, probably. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. You, you you don't get a you very rarely get a choice of clubs to say, well, he, there's this club, yeah, that no, club, no, that no, club. You generally, yeah, you generally say, well, this club wants you. We've agreed a fee. You're off, mate, and that was it. And then you had to go. So even if you didn't want to go, you <laughs> you were physically manhandled out the door. Go, mm. you had to go. So what about you then, Mark? Which Premier League club would uh, come in for you, and who would you like to? Uh... Well, I wouldn't mind the wages. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of them would have me. <laughs> if, you, if you take the wages out of it, what what club would you go to? What now in the current Premier League? Yeah, I mean that'd be wonderful to play for a club like Manchester City, wouldn't it? Because they are they play such wonderful football. But then you think of uh, clubs like Brentford, which I think you managed at one point, did you? Very briefly, yeah. Briefly, uh, but yeah. Well, no, thanks for but reminding <laughs> me about that. Yeah. <laughs> but they're they're a good club, aren't they? Play good football. Yeah. Good good local club. Which yeah. Obviously, being an Ipswich fan, we like local clubs. So I suppose yeah, something like that. I don't. I've no idea. No, that's very good. Yeah. Well, interesting questions. Thank you very thanks, much, Mark. Very Give me a round of applause. Thank you, Mark. I'll have that in the microphone. Cool. Well, uh, Mark, what, what club would you like to play for? Me, Arsenal. Oh, oh, come on, he why, asked. Why Arsenal? why Arsenal? I used to, when I was very, very young, I used to like Arsenal in the Charlie George, George Armstrong, Frank McClintock, Rimmer. Se 71, 71. 70, 71 when they won the double. Yeah. Um, 
because as a young kid you support the the team that's doing well don't you so for the early in the early 70s i was actually a gooner um so I've never alan ball in this alan ball was my then, favorite because yeah. we yeah. were similar oh, colorings great, great player alan yeah. ball similar great coloring so i loved him and, great man and then i heard him speak Oh, it's fun. And you, you can't speak ill of the dead now, can you? Alive or the dead. So he had the squeakiest little voice I'd ever heard. Loveliest man in the world. Oh, yeah. Really nice guy. Brilliant yeah. fella. Brilliant. Lovely, so lovely uh, man, so yeah. it'll be Arsenal, I think, really. And they're having a good good run at the moment, aren't they? They're doing all right. Yeah, I think I could add something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah, come back to that later on. Perhaps we will. Rob's here. Come on, Rob, your turn. Come on, Robberino. Come on, Rob. Come on, Rob. Robberino. Come on, Robberino. On the hallowed sofa yeah, where so true, many true have legend. sat. True legend, on, on the ledgery sofa. Yeah, don't sit on my custard oh, tarts. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, Mark. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. What do you want to ask the boys then, Rob? Uh, well, I, I know it's against your nature to sort of talk about or big up opponents of yours or whatever, uh, Russell and uh, Terry, but who, respectively, uh, w was the most, most brilliant player you've ever sh shared a football pitch with, you know, for each of you? Go on, Terry. I need to think about this. Yeah. Well, it was Georgie Best in many respects because oh. he, in Bobby Robson's testimonial. Oh. Was that his second or third testimonial, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, but no, the the best one, no, the 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 best player was a certain Argentinian, and he's he's oh. dead, so I can't really speak ill of him. Oh. No, you can't yeah. libel him no. now. His name I will not mention. No, 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 okay. no. no. Like Lord Voldemort, isn't he? Yes, in, uh, yes, Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. mention the name. But anymore. you just mentioned it, so you, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. so, Bestie, when you played with him in that testimonial, I mean, he, he hadn't played for a while, had he, at that point? And how, how good was he at that point? Well, it was a testimonial, so this, you know, the standard of play wasn't particularly mm. great because players are looking after themselves. But, you know, it was just to, it just was just to, be, on, just, just to be on the pitch and oh. in the same changing room and in the same bathroom but not quite the same bath but you know in the same in the bathroom because he, he had the town shirt on he played for the town yeah. didn't he yeah, yeah. he played yeah. was he, he played number for was he number 11 yeah i think i think he was i yes. think he was yeah. number yeah. 11 yeah, yeah. but yeah. he was he was just just the aura of him just you know ever because he came in and everybody just stopped and looked at him because Ooh. he was wow this this you know living legend sort of thing yeah. this um, phenomenal player the one thing i remember about the game and watching him play is if he wanted to hit a 30-yard ball, it was like his, his feet would change into a, the right sort of golf club and he would just clip it sort of, you know, 30 yards through the air and 15-foot height. And if it was a longer pass, it was more like a five-iron or four-iron and, and just ping it and drill it. And whether it was left foot, right foot, it just stroke the ball about, but always so clean and tidy in his strike of the ball. It was magnificent. And who, was your, who would yours be? My, well, I was fortunate enough to um, uh, take part in the film Escape to Victory, so of course he's got to be cool. Sly Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could pick about 10 people that you would uh, <laughs> be absolute icons. Yeah. Wow. That beats Maradona. Oh, we can't say that. Oh, that no. beats him head, hands down. Well done, Ozzy. Well so, done. Excellent yeah. stuff. Great, great reply. Yeah. Bobby yeah. Moore, what's Bobby Moore like? Bobby Moore was, he was just absolutely different class. Loveliest man in the world. He'd ask you about 10 questions as soon as you bumped into him in the morning, you know, how's the wife, how's the kids, how's everything going, how's your game, you know, what are you doing, how's your golf game? And it was just a lovely, lovely fellow and to actually play alongside him, even though it was just in the, the Skate Victory film, was, was brilliant. And boy, could he suck gin and tonics. Unbelievable! Oh, what is England captain? What do you expect? You oh, know, he, was, he, was, uh -huh. he was great. He was what, really what about nice fella. What was Pele like? Pele, different class. A very, very nice man. He'd come out, he'd play his guitar and have a sing song and have a drop of scotch with us in the evening and a, a bit of dinner. And common denominator was all the good players like to like to drink. So I had to sort of follow them and try and keep up with them a little oh, bit. Uh, yeah. As you do, right. as you do, yeah. We did our best. <laughs> Um, Ozzy Ardiles was there, of course, so I was fortunate to play alongside three World Cup winners in that one team. So, But Pally was just unbelievable, some of the things he did. You know, we used to play Piggy in the middle in between takes in the, the football if we got a bit of a break. 
And if you got in the middle trying to get the ball back and you got Casimir Dana there, the, the Manchester City Polish player, and you got Bobby Moore and Summerby and and Pele and Ardil is there, you you spend a lot of time going around in circles trying to get a <laughs> kick of the ball. Was that right? I think Bobby, before the game in the dressing room, Pele would just say just have his shorts and socks on and, uh, and, and you know, the, you get to about... 30 well about 40 minutes before the game and uh, he would he would just he would lay down with his feet up on the bench on this on the seat so he'd lay on the floor and he would fall asleep go to sleep he yeah. just fall asleep and it's you know you, you're not you're not heavy sleep not a deep sleep but just fall fall asleep and just and just re and just relax and just calm everything down I, you know, I they, did that in Bob Robson's team talks a couple of times yeah. <laughs> I used to do that in the toilet as well sometimes but there we are but no he, and it was the way ahead of his time when you think about preparation mentally for games you know you put everything out of your mind and, and it, you know, it's very very I mean he's a very clever player as well as a, a, a you know, world class can I ask one other question Mark can I just ask each of you uh, lads um, who was your most difficult opponent and why Taxman, yeah, yeah. Um, Taxman was tax hard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. brilliant. Still difficult, no. yeah, yeah. Difficult opponent for me. I'll tell you who is who I always found hard to play against was David Speedy, because he was only about, <clears throat> well, still is only about five foot eight, five foot nine, but he got a real high spring on him. So, you know, you used to think you got an easy header, and he'd sort of suddenly pop up and. He was a tough little lad as well. You know, he's a complete pain in the backside, to be honest. Yeah, you didn't like, you didn't want to stop kicking him, really, did you? No. You know, he's, he was, phew, he's one of these guys. And he kept just, coming back for more, he? kept coming tough yeah. as anything, really, yeah. really tough. That my hardest opponent I found in my career was the guy that shouted last orders <laughs> in, the, in the pubs in the Ipswich in the Ipswich Arms. <laughs> that was my hardest opponent. <laughs> but no, I, I find I find them all difficult because they all present a problem. That's why they're there. That's why they're playing and, and made it as footballers. They also a physical problem, uh, a pace problem, a skill problem. If, um, if you're having a bad day, everybody's a tough mm, opponent. Yeah. 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 I had a few bad days, is what you're trying to say, yeah. <laughs> now, if you're having a good day, then it's not such a problem. I Everybody can remember can someone asking, and you'll remember this, Phil, I can remember someone asking Kevin Beatty that, who was your toughest opponent? And he just looked and went... <laughs> yeah, he just, well, none of them really. None of them really? <laughs> no, no. He just didn't care. Mm. No. I think he found one or two... I think he was talking about sort of people like Joe Jordan being kind of tough, do you know what I mean? But not... But he'd get them in. He'd be able to cope with them. I think he, th he felt he was one of the toughest opponents. But as in sort of you know physical strength and and, and, and that side of it. But yeah, he, he just seemed to find them. But all. B, B was a freak, wasn't he? In many resp respects, yeah. physically, ability-wise, pace-wise, strength-wise. You know, he was just. And he had the lot, didn't he? He was a monster. Yeah. He really yeah. was a monster, and he 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 coped with things, and he, it was just natural for him that he that he beat people and he was stronger than them, and you know. But you know, he you sort of think. In games, and he was exceptional in, the, in, in most of the games he played. And you sort of think, you know, you, you're looking for perfection. You sort of think, there's still more to come from him. You yeah. always felt there's more to come from Beat. You know, he didn't, he, he, did he fulfill his potential? Possibly not. No, I don't but think so. The ride and the journey he gave us were exceptional, weren't what they? What was lovely at Guess the Season the other day at Portman Road um, was the goal that Beat scored from the halfway line. Did you see that on Guess yeah. the oh, Season? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just just free kick from the halfway line, sails into the goal, and the, and the cheeky little look on his face to the bench, going, "Oh, look at that! How I good!" <laughs> <laughs> it was just fantastic to see. Rob Arino, thank, yeah, you, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Well the mic. Well Give me the mic. Well right the mic. Uh, Dean's up next from DPS Tech, oh the sponsor of the sofa. Go. Come and sit on the sofa that you're paying for, Dean. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for your kind sponsorship. There you go. It's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, I've first time it. this end, look, isn't it? it After is, all the uh, shows. Yeah, what do you want to talk to the boys probably about? Probably worth the money. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, Dean. Hi, guys. Uh, obviously, you were favourites of mine, but I did have an outstanding favourite, and that was Paul Mariner. And we were talking about him a little bit earlier. And seeing as we're playing Plymouth the weekend, I was just wondering, have you got any broadcastable stories maybe <laughs> you could tell us about Maris? And Because uh, and, I know you guys knew him really, really well. Um, Nebworth springs to mind. Um, we went to see uh, Deep Purple perform at Nebworth one year because 
Muggins here and Paul were into the, the heavy metal, loud music and dragged us along and uh, compliments of uh, Ian Gillen. We sort of went in a little caravan around the, the back of the stage, didn't we? For a few bottles of scotch before they started to perform. <clears throat> and uh, we eventually managed to get home, but Paul had bought a, a guest with him, a, a young lad who um, got a brand new sort of barber wax jacket to, to wear for the occasion and everything. The, the lad must have been 14 or 15. And this all night rock festival, and we lost him. <laughs> As you do. As you do. As you do. After a few bottles of scotch. And it had been raining, and it was boggy and muddy and everything, and we couldn't find him anywhere. You know, and eventually walking back to the car, somebody pro provided a, a car for us. Uh, we tripped over him, <laughs> and that's the only way we found him. Threw him in the back of the car and got him home. <laughs> but that was what—that was all Mariner's fault. Yeah, I can remember um, 1980. I think it was 1982, after uh, Bobby had left, and I, I think Arnold left as well. And Bobby Ferguson was the manager, and we'd drawn Roma in the UEFA Cup. It's the first leg away in Rome, obviously, and um, we went out to Rome and they smashed us 3-0, which was a bad one for us and a hard one to take. So we went out, remember we went out? It was me, well, you, well, well, well. me, you, Maras, and uh, Walkie, because Walkie, Walkie and Maras were like joined at the hip, they were too unbelievable. And so we went out, the four of us went out for a meal and um, it wasn't, there weren't any curfews or anything like that, it was just go out and then come back and flew home the next day. But went out for a meal. Obviously, he had some pastas and stuff like this. And there was we had this um, frascati wine. Well, we could have drunk anything. You know, it wasn't bother us. So we had the and they they came in these lovely earthenware jugs, didn't they? That painted and all that beautiful jugs. And what happens is that you 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 pour it out, obviously, and and then if you if you finish it, you keep the the jugs. So we had all had we all thought well we better have one each. So that meant four big <laughs> jugs of wine. I think we had eight, but we couldn't carry two. The other one at home, <laughs> so we went. So we went home, and on the way home, Maris got to, gets the the jug, and he goes lo 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 lo. Of course, it echoes in the in the in the in the jug. So we're all going lo, lo, all the way along the Roman streets and all this stuff. back, eventually find the hotel. Go in the hotel. Come, of course, we've not finished. You know, Frascati was a starter, so we wanted some other stuff. So we get the other stuff, and we have a right right good night. And um, we start the singing was going lot, lot, all the time and that sort of thing. So, so, so we we sort of we went to sleep, then went to bed, and then we woke up you know, obviously the next day, and then packed the jugs away into the bags. Um, and I bleary, I went back went back to Ipswich, and when, then I think we played. Did we went away to Notts County, wasn't it? Notts County, and, uh, and and I think we were bottom of the league because of the Pan, that Pan Am tournament, we bottomed the league <laughs> and we win 6-1. We win 6-1 in the game. And um, and we were in the bath, and of course we are in the bath, and we all start singing, la 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 It's a celebration. <laughs> we're all in the bath together. As a... yeah. So Bobby Ferguson, the Ipswich manager, at then this is one of his earlier games, comes bursting through the door. He says, it was you, you buggers, he says. <laughs> you kept me awake all night with this la 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 la. <laughs> So we upset the manager, yeah. although we did win six one, and we climbed, we climbed out of the, of the bottom. I think of the I table. got the one as well. I think you got the one. Yeah, I got the, the old one, goal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a peach as well. Yeah, wasn't it? it was. It was a left foot volley from inside <laughs> the six yard box as I'm trying to clear it out that way. And Hugh Johns on the big match on the Sunday afternoon said, "And Osman doesn't miss them from that range." <laughs> I'm sat there looking at Paul Cooper thinking, come on, Cooper, please go for it. It flew in the corner. Yeah. La, 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 la. <laughs> but that was the, probably the only, there was obviously bits I missed out, it's but that was, the, that was the only... Yeah. Uh, Perhaps we need to change our, like our signature tune but Maris, for Life's Pitch But Maris TV. was, yeah. Maris was he just sensational. He's, he was a leader and he, he led us astray, particularly when it came to... But he'd lead on the pitch. Yeah. I, he, I don't oh. think I've ever played with anybody... Um, apart from the bloke sat next to me, as brave uh, as what Paul was. I've seen him go into challenges, seen him go into challenges with goalkeepers where they're coming out, you know, with the sole Feet intention first, yeah. of, like, splattering the centre forward all over the place. And Paul's just gone through them, you know. And 
he'd dust himself down <clears throat> and then do it again like five minutes later, you know, and it just didn't bother him at all. And he had, he had, if he got injured, say he had a sore Achilles and he would, he would have injections and you could, and he, um, I think, I think one of the doctors put, um, injected right into, into the Achilles itself. And, uh, you can see the puncture hole and everything else like that. It was painful, but he got out there and played. You know, he would he would go through anything to be yeah, on that he pitch. He played he played up front one day at Middlesbrough, and they had Stuart Bohm and Tony McAndrew, yeah, the two right. centre halves. To cut a long story short, they kicked seven bells out of Paul Minor that day. But in the players' lounge afterwards, Stuart Bohm came in and he got seven stitches in one eyebrow <laughs> and Tony McAndrew who got about six or seven in the other eyebrow and Paul Manor who got a felt pad on his elbow where he got it bruised. <laughs> <laughs> True story. And they, they kicked him all over yeah, the place. But he was, he, was our, he was our leader up there. Yeah. And, and you looked at him to say, well, if he's struggling you know, with pain, and he's what he's doing. That was just perfect, great for us. Yeah. It was a real awesome. inspiration. He was inspirational. He really was. He was one of the best. I always say he's probably the best centre forward I played. I played alongside like both yeah. of us. Both yeah. of us would say that. Fantastic. Do you think there's anybody even remotely like him in the game now? In the game now, mm. you must be joking. Yeah, you wouldn't get away with wouldn't touch him. No, mm. nobody could touch him. He was the no. complete striker, complete striker. Yeah, and he would just say, you know, just the way that he had his northern. Sort of chorley accent, you know, like that. Loud, loud, loud yeah, loud. yeah. <laughs> there was no silence button or mute button on poor Mariner. You, you heard him coming a mile away, and you heard him yeah. going a mile away. But what a man! Yeah. What a leader! Dean, great questions. Thank you very That's much. Very Thanks good. for your sponsorship. Thanks, Thanks, Dean. Dean. Thank you. Me the microphone. And I think Jeff's our last uh, contributor. Where, where are you, Jeff? Come on, come over here. Come and sit on the legendary yeah. sofa, my friend. There we go. So all, all the questions, all the questions have been Hi pretty guys. good so far. So there's no, no pressure, pressure, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're going to get worse. Okay. okay. Oh. I've had a bad week. I really have had a bad week. Oh, okay. Well, talk is it, it going to get worse now? My adopted club, Ipswich Town, but my home club, Torquay United, gone into administration. Oh yeah. So that's a sad moment. Sad mm. moment. Really. Anyway, moving on. Yes, come on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but any help? Uh, where's the camera? Any help? All right. Talk United. It's something .co.uk or whatever website. Just chuck some money at it, all right? Well, they play in yellow, don't they? Money, all right? They play in yellow, don't they? They play in yellow. The goals play it play more. But they've got a couple of exit switch players, haven't they? Brett McGavin plays for them. Yeah. Frank Newble was there last season. Yeah, and I'm trying to yeah. think one of the um, fullback would have played for your team. I can't think of his name now off the top of my head, but uh, I'll have a look in <coughs> a second. Yeah. But I came to I came to Suffolk in eighty four, so I very privileged to watch you two guys play. Stood on the old churchman's mm. end. Cool. On the terracing. Really, really good. You only just got there in time then because we were only there that year. You weren't. You yeah. you were just about getting the legs then, weren't you? Just to finish, I think. No, yeah. I, I, got moved, <laughs> I got moved out in 85. Yeah. Okay. I think you should say your question because you're in dangerous right. territory. Here. <laughs> Are you going to swing at me? Well, <laughs> you'll see you in the car park, I think, I Jeff. Might, I, might, I, might do a, I might do a poor man okay. and I'll get some felt on my well, elbow. Yeah, my, yeah. my question is, Terry, management, you manage the Philippines. No. Did you not? No. But well, carry on. You got one wrong. The yeah, national yeah. team. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it on no. the website. Yes, but don't believe everything what you happened? read on the website. What Did, happened? Well, I agreed to do the the job, and then I found out that they don't pay the previous managers and don't pay anybody because they haven't got any money. And I decided, well, okay. No. So it went went pear shaped. We didn't go pear shaped. It never okay. started in the okay. first place. <laughs> okay. So when you see I was Philippines <laughs> manager, it's wrong. Okay. But it's Wikipedia. And okay. Wikipedia called okay. me Terence anyway, went, so they're okay. complete rubbish. <laughs> it went pineapple right. shape. It went pineapple <laughs> shape, yeah. Another question, though, in terms of sport. But you started off well. I mean, come on, in come terms on. of sport, I know Russell plays a bit of golf. Yeah. Yeah. He's very good. Both of you, same question, really. What's, what, for any youngster out there watching, would you say is the most key thing that those youngsters need to adopt in terms of any sport, whatever it might be, golf, football, tennis, whatever. What do they need to adopt at a young age? What is the right thing they need to adopt and why? Attitude. You've got to have the right attitude to it. You can have as much talent in the world, but if you haven't got the right sort of attitude, you ain't going to get anywhere. They've got to be mentally strong, haven't they? Yeah. They're really able to adapt. 
Yeah, because lots of things would be thrown at them. And I'm actually that surprised is... because that was a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very they get, surprised. They get better. They get, oh, better. get better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think. I think. I mean, abil ability is ability. You know, you can you can improve that to a certain degree. But if you're strong mentally, then you can cope with anything. You really okay. can. Okay. And can you can you nurture that as an individual, or have parents or mentors that can nurture that for you? Well, I think it. Uh, it's got to come from yourself more than anything else. Really? You know, okay. you've got to be able to do it. But you know, you can get help from people and. If you speak to the right people and they, they can guide you a certain way, then you take that on board. But you make up your mind if that in advice or that opinion is 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 good to build on. So, yeah. But no, it's it's a really good question. I wouldn't say it's the best of the night, but it's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, we're going to have to leave it on that. Thank you very much, Jeff, everybody. Well done, Jeff. Well done, Jeff. Well done, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Good boy. Uh, that was fascinating. Absolutely yeah. fascinating. Thank you. Uh, it is time for a very special... New style, keep it up challenge, sponsored by our friends at Ginger Pickle. Now, for this week, we don't need our big ball, which is around there somewhere, um, because we have a slightly different version of this. Uh, would you give, please, all the way from Seckford Golf Club, Simon J, a big oh, round of Simon. applause. Come on, Simon. Come here for a second. Come here. Come here. Uh, well done. Uh, so you've you've got your ball. I've got my ball. Got my yeah, sandwich. and you've got your sand wedge. Yeah. Um, and so what we normally do is we get the the the, the football, and it's sixty seconds to keep it up. Yeah. Um, what are you going to do? I'm going to try and keep it up for as long as I can, and hopefully sixty seconds. Throw a few tricks in as well, maybe. Okay. So you're talking about the golf club yeah. and the ball here. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Would you like to go over into the performance area? What else is he going to keep it up? Okay. So you've got a minute. So feel free, capacity crowd, to come around because you're going to need to count, okay? So this is Simon's attempt to get onto the uh, leaderboard. Phil's got the whistle. Terry's got the 60 seconds. Are you ready, Simon? Okay. Are you ready? You have to count louder than that so we can hear you. Seconds. How are we doing? Thirty seconds. Forty seconds. Want to see a header? You want to see a header? <laughs> Okay, how are we doing there? Oh, eight seconds. Eight. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, and in the pocket. Well done. What What do we think it was, boys, that are counting here? Well, we're going to count the thighs because that... 121, everybody. Well done, Simon. Very much top of the leaderboard. I think I've, I've hit the ball twice in one shot, but never 120 <laughs> times. Just shows your golf's an Fantastic. easier game. Simon from Secford Golf Club. Well done, Simon. Fantastic. Don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, to smash the like button, subscribe as well. Uh, it helps us enormously with YouTube if you can do that. And don't forget to check out www.lifesapitch.tv. There are mugs and T-shirts available on there. And we'll soon be announcing our end-of-season dinner, which you can buy tickets for. We'll have our own awards at the end of the season as well, so we're really looking forward to that. Um, let's uh, catch up now with uh, Phil Hamm from TWTD.com. Co.uk with Town News in Brief, sponsored by John Keeble Cars of Bramford. And in the North American Supporters Club hat as well. <laughs> you are uncannily, was one, was, uncannily like your cartoon. There was one cheer, <laughs> I noticed, from the North American Supporters Branch representative. Yeah. Um, right, yes. So the big news in the press conference today is Wes Burns and Nathan Broadhead will both miss Saturday's trip to Plymouth Argyle.
but Connor Chaplin should be able to play a part and Jack Taylor should, could return to the squad. Burns and Broadhead were both subbed, having suffered injuries in Saturday's 3-1 home victory over Birmingham City and manager Kieran McKenna confirmed that they'll be unavailable at home park. Chaplin was also replaced late on, having been hurt by a challenge. I think you got a cut on his leg. Um, Wes and Nathan are unavailable. Both have muscle strains. Connor, we're hopeful, will be able to train with the group tomorrow. Uh, no other changes from last week's game, McKenna said. They're not major muscle strains. They're minor muscle strains, so they're not available for this weekend. We'll have to assess them for the games coming up. Very unlikely, I would imagine, for Tuesday's game against Bristol City. Uh, and for next Saturday, I'll have to wait and see. Regarding Chaplin... He said he had a bad gash just below his knee from a tackle and he's had a few days off to protect that. We're hoping he can join in and play some part on Saturday. Uh, Taylor could join his teammates in making the trip to the southwest, having been out with a quad injury, uh, which is another positive. And there's further good news that Janoi Danassian, who hasn't been involved since the start of November due to a groin problem, he's, un- he's had surgery, uh, but he's on the way back and should be and is now out on the grass running. So he'll start doing ball work next week. Um, Elsewhere, rumours uh, circulating of Premier League interest in town left-back Leif Davis. According to Talk Sport Newcastle, Davis's hometown club and the team he supports and West Ham, who apparently view him as a replacement for ex-town left-back, Aaron Cresswell, are keeping tabs on the 24-year-old. I've also heard rumours, uh, whispers that uh, Nottingham Forest have shown a fair amount of interest in uh, Davis, who Town bought from Leeds for just for, for just over a million in the summer of 2022. He's contracted to Town until the summer of 2025, but with the club having an option for a fur, further year, that's effectively 2026. It's likely the Blue would val- Blues would value him in excess of 20 million should a club firm up its interest in the summer. So interesting uh, to see whether that progresses anywhere in the summer. Amari Hutchinson has been named in the 60-man, 60-man, by the way, preliminary Jamaica squad for the CONCACAF Nations League's finals next week. Uh, The reggae boys play the US in the semi-final in Arlington on Thursday, 21st of March, with the winners facing either uh, Panama or Mexico in the final. The squads will be reduced to 23 prior to the games, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, Hutchinson... Um, who, according to reports, is interested in clubs on the continent following a successful spell with the Blues, has previously won two Jamaica caps in friendlies, but in the past has opted not to join up with the squad when called up for competitive games, presumably to keep his international choices open. And it will probably be the same this time around. Um, Prior to to representing Jamaica, the 20-year-old Chelsea attacker won caps with England at under-17 and under-19 levels. So you wonder whether he's keeping his options open that uh, should his career progress, he could... I think that's pretty obvious. Do you think think it's pretty obvious? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think he should just join the reggae boys. Yeah, yeah. Do you think? Yeah. 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 I think he's got more chance with them, to be honest, but... Well, how do you see his... I mean, he's obviously made a massive impression the last, and, and has improved over the, the course of the season, hasn't he? Do you, yeah, do you but you, I mean, you look at the wealth of talent that England have you know, on the flanks or in the middle or whatever. You know, this to be very, very difficult. And I think you sometimes got to say, well, where where am I going to play? You know, where you know, am I going to play on a regular basis for England? So it's a, it's a, if he's got the choice, it's a difficult choice for him, but he's got to put, you know, go where he, where he feels is right. Mm. Do you see him as a, as a Premier League player or, uh, with, with, with Chelsea? Yeah, potentially, yeah. I mean, he's got the he's got ability. The thing about Hutchinson in particular is, on a consistent basis, but he's still he's still learning the game with Ipswich and with you know the Championship and everything else like that. Playing regular matches takes a bit. He's he's in and out of the team to a certain degree because of the form of Broadhead and and Burns. But I mean, if he gets a good run in the team, who knows? If he can if he can up keep that game at a at, at the right level you know, and he can reach that level. Then he could keep those players out if he if he if he does you know plays well and scores goals yeah. and and assists. I mean, you know, he's got great ability, you know, left foot, right foot. He's got a great pace, and he's a good finisher. Okay, and the attitude. I think he's got good attitude as well. And that yeah. is the good news. Thank you very much, yeah. Phil. Uh, let's have a look yeah. at what happened to ITFC on this day. Brought to you in association with Fred Olsen Logistics. <laughs> Well, believe it or not, on this day in history, the Ipswich Town, uh, history facts and figures from Dan Botton's book. Uh, Saturday the 28th of February, Town extended their 15-game unbeaten run by running a mock at Highfield Road in a 4-0 victory. 
Finishes from Russell Osman, <laughs> Eric wow. Gage, Which... Steve McCall, and Alan Brazil kept the Blues top of the Division One. I know that was the 28th of February. Say, Moving on to the 29th. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the only chance I get to have a mention. Especially the goal in the right net. Well, there we are. Yeah, thank you. Tuesday, 29th of February, 1972, Swedish international striker Nicholas Gudmundsson was born. He spent two months on loan at Portman Road from Blackburn Rovers at the end of the 1996-97 season and scored three important goals in ten games. Also, on Saturday the 29th of February, this time in 1992, an important 2-0 home win over Plymouth Argyle kept Ipswich behind leaders Blackburn Rovers in Division 2. Chris Kiwamia and Steve Witten scored in the second half. And we went on to win the title. That is all that happened on this day on the 29th of February. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And uh, ty- somebody else's birthday, wasn't it? Darren Ambrose? Darren Ambrose's birthday, yeah. Yep. So he's oh, old. Lego man. Lego man. Yeah. I wonder if he had a Lego cake <laughs> made up of, entirely of Lego. Well, we're trying ha- to get him on the sofa, but he doesn't well, answer my text. if he had any candles on the Lego cake, they would just melt the plastic, <laughs> would they not? We'll have to get him on and ask him. Yeah, but I mean, in, in real years, how many? How old would Darren Ambrose be? About seven? <laughs> Something like that, eight? No wonder he likes Lego. Yeah. Um, now, the Man V Fat results. After a delayed start on Friday, the game's eventually kicked off. And after weighing in, the guys lost another 22.2 kilograms, bringing the season's total weight loss to 180.3 kilograms, or 28 stone, which is absolutely incredible. So well done to everybody. Uh, These are the results. Seattle Quarter Pounders, 14. Far From Athletic, 9. LA Galaxy Bar, 10. Pork Vale, 16. Man Titty, 14. To Lose a Few Pounds, 16. Largentina, 6. Dinamo Kebab, 11. Team names of the week, Cholesterol Palace (laughs) and Fatburn Rovers. Uh, Can you please give a shout out to Rob Evans, who achieved his 15% certificate and wish the guys well at the newly launched Clacton League as they start their weight loss journeys this week. That's from Man V Fat Mark. It's the end of the show, everybody. Oh, I know. Wake I know. up, wake up, come on. Yes, thank you, Butch. Thank you, Russell. Thank Pleasure. you, Phil. Thank you. Thank you, our tech team. Oh. Thank you, our capacity crowd. Three. And uh, don't forget, keep watching, keep smashing that like button and subscribe on YouTube. But for now, everybody, cheerio and up the town. Up the town, up the town. everybody. Come on, mate.